but um, I think our movement is going to begin with us on our back. So if you want to just settle into or onto your backs, feel free to do that now. Or if you want to begin um, seated, you can be seated. Kind of remembering we always have a choice in yoga class. And I think a beautiful approach to our practices, plural, this week can be remembering that the movements are here to support us. So as we move today and as we kind of approach each shape and as we're in each shape, maybe being in that curiosity of, is this supportive right now? Sometimes it might not seem supportive and it might turn out to be, sometimes it might be uncomfortable, but then it might actually be what we need. Other times it's uncomfortable and it's not what we need. So opening up to curiosity and opening up to a supportive practice. So perhaps saying out loud or to ourselves, my practice supports me. My practice supports me. And then moving into this sacred space This time that we've carved out in our day to support us. Feeling the breath in the body. Feeling the body in space. And then beginning to move with the breath, we'll send our left leg long. And the right foot on the ground, maybe that right foot is near the left knee or kind of closer up on the thigh or lower, you know, closer to the foot. We'll drop that right knee out to the side, a little reclined tree. Letting that knee fall out in effortlessness. Notice if you're clenching that right glute and let that tension go. So the right leg can be effortless. Maybe that needs to bring a block under your knee. Yeah. And let's be here for five breaths. Whether you're at the final breath or not, maybe bringing that left foot to the ground, the right knee to the sky now, or that right, sorry, right foot to the ground, right knee to the sky. Kind of tuck that pelvis, hug the right knee in so the entire low back is on the ground. And let's just kind of gently let that hip kind of rock up to the side so that knee would be falling out to the right. And we have it kind of into the chest, maybe hands on shin. Or the right knee comes over towards the left. You can stack a block under that right knee. Sometimes I stack my left fist under my right knee to kind of prop the knee off the ground. Or maybe the knee comes all the way to the ground. You Knowing you can manipulate this stretch by the height of the knee get to get a more outer hip, maybe it's lower. Keep that knee high. 
The right arm can be out to the side. Be closing those eyes and feeling the support in this shape. Notice if you're clenching or contracting that left leg, maybe let the left leg be effortless as we just let this right leg cross over. Now on an exhale, roll back over onto the back, the right knee coming to the middle again. So now the back's on the ground, hug the right knee in just a breath. Let's send the right leg up to the sky and point and flex the, the right foot. So on your own breath, we inhale into point, exhale into flex, noticing the low back on the right side respond as we point and flex. Your own case. The next time you point that foot, pause with that toe pointed. And let's draw some circles across the ceiling. It can be really big circles. So maybe that foot almost comes down towards the ground, or they can be tiny circles, or they can be both. We feel the response in the low belly and the low back. And then bring that foot to stillness. And then kind of shake it out, point and flex it out, roll the ankle out. And then let's lower the right leg to the ground. Let it be effortless, let it be long. Maybe you kind of shake it out and plop it up and down on the ground. And then we'll draw that left foot to the floor. Maybe it's close to the right calf or close to the knee. We'll come into that reclined tree on the other side. So left knee coming towards the earth. Relaxing the left glute, letting the left knee just kind of fall out. The right leg is also effortless. Let's breathe a few breaths into our entire body. Maybe even imagining that the breath, the entire body is breathing. The breath flows in and out of every little skin cell in our entire body. Now let's exhale to bring the left foot to the ground, the right knees to the sky now. And then lift that, those glues, lift that pelvis, lower the entire low back onto the ground and hug the left knee into the chest. And you can drop that left knee out to the side. The hands are, are maybe interlaced on that shin. So the hands support the knee to drop out. We drop back in. And then we'll let that right, or that left knee cross over the body the left arm coming out to the side knee. And again, maybe that right hand, that fist supports the knee. Maybe the knee comes to the ground. I want to be a lot. Just exploring how the height of that knee impacts where we feel the opening in that hip, that outer hip or that glute or the back. Maybe again, breathing with our entire body. Sometimes instead of letting my left arm come out like a T, I like to bring it up. So kind of the wrist is stacked over the shoulder and the left arm is beside the head, reaching past the top of the head. Just an option. Now when you're ready, bring that, the entire back to the floor again and that knee back to the sky. Low back on the ground, hug the knee in for just a moment. You can roll that ankle, flex the foot here with the knee drawn into the chest. And then when you're ready, extend the leg long. And then let's point and flex the foot, inhaling as we point, exhaling as we flex, your own pace. You might notice this in the shin as we point. 
back of the leg as we flex. There's no goal here, we're just moving. And now as we point the toes, let's make those circles. Maybe the circles are completely different than they were on the other side. Notice how the low belly and that low back responds. Feeling it in the hip. Maybe you're feeling it more in the torso. You can't do this incorrectly. A couple more circles. And finding that stillness. When you find that stillness, you can roll the ankle, isolating it to the ankle hole. No longer than move in the hip so much. And let's plant that left foot to the ground and bring that right foot up to meet the left foot. So now both feet on the ground. Maybe you lift the hips up, feel the entire low back on the floor. And then we'll exhale. You can shimmy the shoulders. Bring yourself into a bridge setup. So we'll exhale and bring those hips to the sky as we drive the glutes towards the sky. And then let's lower. Inhale or exhale down, whichever feels better. And then exhale, drive those glutes up. And then we'll lower the hips down. This time add on the arms. So maybe we Exhale, drive the hips up and the arms float up and the back of the hands come to the ground above the head. And we can lower down. Just going at your own pace, your own breath. Maybe three or four more times. Noticing that the more you press your feet down and drive those hips up, you might feel it in those hip flexors. You'll feel it in your hamstring, those backs of the legs. See if you can connect breath to movement. Honoring the experience. And once you get those hips to the floor again, pause there with the hips on the ground, the low back on the ground. And now we're gonna bring the, the uh, back of the hand, and I forget what it's called, like right above the wrist, that bottom of the hand, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So take that part of both hands and press it into that spot where the hip flexors are. So kind of in that crease, that hip crease. So press that back of the hand there, and maybe your arms straighten and just press there. Then the arms straighten. Maybe you notice the upper back, the low back, the arms. And then release that press into the crease. Exhale to draw the hips to the sky. The hands can be on the floor. Maybe they're stressing on the hip flexors. And then lower down the hips. Place the back of the hand there in that hip crease. Straighten the arms. Press those hip creases away. Straighten the arms. And then release that press into the crease. And now let's explore the placement of the feet as we come into a bridge. So maybe if they're close to the glutes, you can walk them out a little further. If they're far away, maybe walk them in closer. So when you're ready with that new foot placement, whether closer or further away from the, sit, the six bones, whether you can press up, lifting the hips, if the feet are further away, you might feel it more in the hamstrings in the back of the leg. If they're closer, be more in the glutes. And then we'll lower down. Maybe you walk the feet out a little further or you draw them in a little closer. And then when you're ready, exhale, drive up. And then we'll lower down the hips. You can do that one more time if you want. Maybe you just pause here for a breath while your friends in class try one more time. 
when you get lowered down, you can draw the hands or the knees into the chest with the hands on the shins. And we'll rock side to side. Let the knees maybe drop out to the side. The hands support the shins and the knees drop out. Maybe noticing on the inner thigh. And walking back and forth just like a baby does when they play. Maybe one more time to each side. Maybe you're really rocking. <laughs> And bring the feet to the ground. And before we come up to stand, we're going to find our block. We did this the other day at the end of class. Press the feet into the floor, lift those hips up, slide that block underneath the sacrum for our little supported legs up the wall. So bring that block just right above that little crease that we have between those buttermilk biscuits, and then bring the legs to the sky. And let that weight kind of drop into the pelvis and let our legs get a little break here. You might notice they come into a bend on their own. They might fall apart on their own. Just kind of let your legs call the shots here. Making sure that, that block is comfortable wherever you have it placed. Maybe we give ourselves 10 breaths here. Not that we have to count them, but just knowing that we're going to be here to support a little bit of freedom. So just allow yourself to let go. And close the eyes, softening the gaze. softening any of the edges that we might have come to class with today. Whether it's a mental edge, emotional or physical edge, just inviting a little bit of melting and softening. We'll be here for three and two and one. And now keep that block where it is. Let's bend our knees in just a little. Let those feet come into that bridge setup. So our feet are on the ground now. So we kind of transition to a supported bridge. Make sure that block feels okay. So feet are grounded now. And now let's, maybe if it feels okay, extend the right leg. Check in and see how that feels on the back and on the pelvis. If it feels okay, maybe extend the left leg long. So we've got the block underneath that low back and our legs are long, so our hips are up. If this feels okay, we'll be here for about five to seven breaths. If it doesn't feel so good, come into that bridge, lift the hips, Remove the block and just lie in Shavasana. Let the feet fall out or in. Maybe noticing the shoulders may be coming separated a little more. Just breathe and be. Now three, and two, and one. Now sometimes it's helpful to bring the palms face down to the ground. And then we'll bend one knee and bring the foot to the ground. And then bend the other leg and that foot comes to the ground. Lift the hips, remove that block. And now this is such a wonderful moment as we bring the back to the ground and let the legs come out into Shavasana. There's no block. We're just flat on the ground. And let that energy move now with a completely neutral body. My practice supports me.
Let's breathe in. Exhale, let the breath go. Now you're welcome to stay here for a few more breaths if you want. Or let's come up to standing into our mountain pose and feel that kind of neutral body in a standing pose. We won't be supported by the earth in our standing pose. We'll let the feet support us in our standing mountain pose. Giving yourself as much time and space to make it up to standing as you need. Really good, ladies. Really nice. Good. Now, from this standing shape, maybe feel those feet on the ground, maybe curling the toes, scratching the earth with those toes, and then picking the toes up, spreading the toes out, grounding the toes. And then maybe we kind of march in place, kind of bringing the feet up and the knees up and then planting those feet again, nice and stable. Yes, really good. <clears throat> now inhaling to bring the arms and the hands up overhead. We'll exhale, fold halfway, arms come out like a T. Now let's bend both of the knees, bring the left hand to the right hip and reach right to the sky with that right arm. Breathe in. And now exhale, bend the knees and then lift the shoulders and come into a chair pose, but into, right into our twist. Uh-huh, open the heart towards that right side. Uh-huh, breathe in. And then exhale, straighten the legs, bring that left hand towards that right hip with the right arm to the sky. Good, now fold it forward, bring the hands towards the feet and let the head hang and be heavy. Bend the knees, let's inhale to rise up. Exhale, hands come to the heart space, standing nice and tall, grounding firmly into the floor. My practice supports me. Exhale, bend the knees, fold forward halfway. Bring the right hand towards that left hip. Reach to sky with the left hand. Mm -hmm. And now exhale, bend the knees and lift that right arm forward, coming into our chair twist. Mm -hmm. Towards the left. Good, exhale, straighten the legs, bring the right hand towards that left hip. And now bring the left hand under the heart, the right hand meets it there, hanging in our forward fold, breathing in and out. Now exhale, plant the hands, bend the knees, ground the right foot, step that left foot back, and then drop that left knee to the floor. We'll go right into our half splits as we bring the hips back and point the right toe to the sky. Let's be here for a breath. We can press that heel down, or we can just kind of rest that leg there. And now on an exhale, bring both hands onto the left side of that right leg. So both hands on the left side of the right leg. Pivot that left foot towards the right side of the mat and the right foot pivots down. So we'll set up for that gate pose. So we're on the left knee and the right leg is out to the side. Bring your arms out like a T. Yep, really good. And now drive that left hip forward. And it might feel like you're in a back bend, but we're gonna just try to stack that left hip over the left knee. Press the right foot into the ground. Maybe feel it on the inside of that right leg. Let's breathe in. And now exhale, bring the left hand towards the floor. Maybe it comes onto a block or onto the ground, the right arm to sky. And then from here, when you feel stable in the left hand, let's lift the right foot off the ground. It can be a lot or a little. And maybe just pulse it up and down. We're going to get some blood flow and energy into that outer right hip, and then lower the right foot down. Inhale to draw the arms back up like a T. Mm -hmm. Exhale, bring the hands to the hips, and then draw that right knee in. Let's fold it forward, walk the hands into our puppy setup. And then from here, 
Try to bring that right leg out to the side again. And press the right foot down. Mm -hmm. Melting the heart into the floor. Inhale to glance up at the hands. Walk the hands towards the heart. Now from here, we're going to bring our hands towards the left and come onto our side body. So drop the hips and the left leg long, lie down on the floor, the left hand reaching out, and the right hand can come to the hip or to the ground in front of us. Mm -hmm. And now bring the knees in front of the hips and stack them, maybe the ankles are underneath the knee. Now we're just going to lift that right knee off the left and then lower the knee down onto the left knee. So kind of opening up like a clamshell, that right knee to the sky. The feet stay kind of glued together. And then a couple times. Mm -hmm. Be closing the eyes and just noticing where we feel any physical sensations. And the last time, draw the knee to the sky and then lower it down. And now send those legs long. From here, roll onto the belly. Press the hands under the shoulders. Let's lift up and back to downward facing dog. Now from downward facing dog, we're gonna press the heels into the floor or towards the floor. Maybe you bend the knees a lot or a little. Again, opening up the backs of the legs, kind of like what we did. We Kind of fired up the backs of the legs and those bridge, those bridges. Now we're going to lengthen them. Now let's find our downward facing dog and lift that right leg to the sky. Bend the knee and we're going to step back the hip. Maybe you make some circles now with that right knee. Making those circles with the knee, just like we did with our toes earlier. And now lower that right foot to the ground. Find your Adho Mukhasanasana. Breathe in. Now exhale, lower down the knees. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Let's sway the hips side to side. And then we glance over the shoulder and check those hips out when they come to that shoulder to side. Just moving kind of slowly. And then come into a neutral spine. Bring the left foot forward and let's rock the hips back, coming into our half splits on the other side. You can press that heel into the earth or you can just let that straight leg create the sensation of the back of the leg. Hands plant, soften those edges, breathe. Inhale, and then exhale, pivot the left foot to the ground, the right foot comes off the mat, kind of behind us. Get that foot out, the hip over the knee, and then we rise up into that bridge or that gate set up. Lengthen through the hands, the fingertips. The left foot is on the ground. You bring a block to the right side or just have the earth there to support us. When you're ready on an exhale, Drop that right hand to the floor or that block. And maybe you just press through that left foot and that's enough for that hip. Keep the hips moving forward if you can. Maybe you lift the left foot off the ground a little or a lot and kind of move it or pulse it. Paying attention to how this is going to support us. And then maybe you lower it down. Let's exhale to come up with a T for just a breath to lengthen through the side body in and out. And then exhale, let's kind of plant those hands, move that block out of the way. And then we'll make our way down onto our right side. So that right leg comes long, coming on to that right side. And then bring that right arm long underneath the head. And then bring those knees in line with the hip. Maybe the knees are just above those ankles. Or you can draw those heels kind of towards the glutes. And then we'll just do that clamshell a couple times. So lifting that left knee up and then lowering. 
And just on your own breath, moving through that motion. And speaking of hips, I'm going to help tank off the floor because his hips are a little weak. And he wants up. There you go. Okay. So breathing into that movement, feeling maybe the sensation on the outer hip or maybe the inner thigh, maybe both. And then next time you get that knee down, the knees meet, pause. Give yourself a breath. And then we'll exhale, roll onto the stomach. And pausing on our stomach, maybe place the forehead to the ground, lengthen through the legs, feel the legs really, really long. Now inhale, lift the heart, lift the chest, bring the hands under the shoulders, press it up. And then come into tabletop, but only to bring those knees wide and to sit back in a child's pose. If you want, maybe you move through a downward facing dog first. That'll lengthen those legs before we kind of come into our child's pose. And now in our child's pose, let's be here for two breaths, just in a normal child pose. Now let's exhale, being mindful and kind of isolating that right glute. Bring the right thigh, kind of the right glute towards the right heel. So you're kind of leaning towards the right. So it's a right leaning child's pose. And then come through middle and lean everything towards the left. So leaning the weight and the energy towards the left side. Lean towards the right again. So just kind of shifting. It might be subtle or it might be really noticeable. And then roll over to the left. Let's inhale, come to the middle. Let the breath go. And now inhale, lift the hips, bring the shoulders over the hands. Now lengthen, we'll bring the knees under the hips now. And now lengthen through the legs. So Maybe come into your awkward facing dog or let the legs be on the ground. But maybe stretch out those hip flexors in the fronts of the legs just with a little bit of a lift in the chest. Maybe try to press the top of the right foot into the ground. And then press the top of the left foot into the ground. Yeah. Maybe alternate pressing the tops of the feet into the earth. Now let's exhale, bring the hips over the knees and then walk the hands towards the knees and we'll come into this half kneel or high kneel, I should say. And maybe sway side to side, just rock those hips back and forth. Mm -hmm. So our high kneel, we rock the hips back and forth and now step the right foot forward and then drop into the left hip. So there's a bend in the right, Right knee or that right leg. Top of the left foot, press it into the floor and feel maybe the top, the front of that right left leg respond, the hip flexors maybe respond. And now let go of that effort in the top of the left foot and draw the left heel towards the left glute. Maybe you bring your hand to catch the foot. But try to create a sensation in the front of that thigh, whether it's just with the heel towards the glute or the hand on the foot. Breathing in and out. And then with control, lower that foot to the ground. Bring yourself back into kind of a high lunge. And then bring that right foot to meet the left knee or the right knee to meet the left knee. And we'll sway those hips side to side again, a high kneel. Yeah, or tabletop. Mm -hmm. And now bring the right knee to ground, set the left foot forward. And then drop into your low lunge, to Anjaneyasana. Feeling that response in the hip flexors wherever that spot is for you. And then maybe you draw that right heel with no hand there towards the glute. You can bring the hand there. Really nice. Making sure that this is supported. 
Do you have that heel or that foot lifted? Let's control lower. Now drop that right heel back. Bring the left knee to meet the right knee. Sway up the hips, moving side to side, and maybe forward and back. Mm -hmm. Nice, guys. Now meet in our high kneel again. You can curl the toes under or keep the feet flat. We're going to move into our camel. So maybe you bring hands kind of into the back pockets or towards the hips. Drive those hips forward first. And notice you kind of might lean back automatically. So maybe the hips drive forward. Now lift the chest up before you start to dip the head back. You press through those hip flexors. And we'll come back into our high kneel with the shoulders over the hips. Let's lean forward into our Anahatasana, lengthening through the spine, dropping the heart, letting the breath go. And then on an exhale, we'll lift back up into our high kneel. Shoulders stacking over the hips. And then whether curling the toes under, keeping the tops of the feet flat, we can bring our hands to the hips or into that back pocket. Mm -hmm. Roll the shoulders up, back, and down. We'll breathe in through the heart to lift the heart. Exhale to press those hips forward. Maybe on an inhale, drop the head back. Coming into a back bend. Maybe you feel it in your thighs and your hip flexors if you want. Maybe you bring your hands to your heels when only your head feels okay and feels supportive. We'll breathe in and out. And when you're ready, lifting the head, kind of bringing the chin to the chest, and then one hand at a time, bring it to the back pocket or to the hips. Really nice, guys. Shoulders over the tips. And then we'll exhale, fold forward into your choice of puppy pose or child's pose, to something that's going to lengthen that low spine. And relax here. Draw another breath in. And whenever you're ready on an exhale, make your way to your back. Maybe you want to stay in this child's pose or puppy pose. If it's feeling especially nourishing, just give yourself as much time there as you want for your practice. You also come to your back when you get to your back. Either you, maybe you go straight into Shavasana, or perhaps you want to recline butterfly. Maybe you want to come into that bridge where you press the back of the hands up, low part of the hand into the hip creases. Maybe you like that supported legs up the wall. So it's kind of like getting into that dessert menu, and you can just pick whichever one you want. Whatever is going to really just finish this off for what your needs are. You cannot do this incorrectly. Our shavasana melds all the combination of movements. It just seals those combinations. 
and allows us to rest. Maybe softening the eyes, allowing the eyes to rest in the back of the head as if they were pulling away from the eyelids. And the low jaw relaxes and our entire face is effortless and at peace. Allowing the body to just be. Now with that intention of mind in mind of my practice supports me. Let that guide you as to whether you stay in Shavasana. So perhaps you press up to a seat for our alternate nostril breathing. Knowing that there's always an option to do visualizing your ultimate nostril breathing in Shavasana. Mm. Really nice guys, yes, it's so great. Getting that seat that's supportive for you. This is so great. We might go just a little over, maybe not. Let's find ourselves in this new position, orienting the breath to this seated position. And finding the appropriate mudras for our alternate nostril breathing, that index and thumb together with the left, the fingers on the third eye, if that's what your choice is, or on the tucked in. You get those ring finger and thumbs in place. Just breathe in and out normally through both nostrils.
And then closing the right and inhaling on the left for one. Close left, exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right, exhale left, inhale left, exhale right, inhale right, exhale left. And inhale left, exhale right, inhale right, exhale left. And rest that right hand in your lap. Be in the support of your practice. Be in the synergy and the interconnectedness of our community. your connection to source. And now we'll exhale, bring hands to the heart if that is supported. And then exhale. Inhale. Thanks, ladies.